All right, hey y'all, it's John, and today we are going to talk about buying a car. And there's a big movement out there to live debt-free, and I absolutely subscribe to it. I am a fan of Ramsey Solutions and what he teaches, and one of those baby steps is to pay off all of your debt, except for your house, and then you work on the house later. And that includes cars, that you should be able to save and take your savings and buy a car with cash. But right now in this environment, I don't think that's the right thing to do. It will change in the future, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. We've got a situation where the stock market is returning good, interest rates on cars are low, are low, and we've got this funny situation coming out of the pandemic where chips are in shortage. So new cars are short, used cars had gone up in price, they've started to rectify themselves a little bit, but dealerships across the country have been able to get on some models more than the sticker price. So financing makes more and more sense because of the return you can get on that money. So let's lay the groundwork here a little bit for what I'm talking about and how I come to the end right there. The first thing is that the S&P 500 has been returning, as you can see here, about 15%, that's year to date, but it's been a strong several years with the exception of a decline during the pandemic. Well, flip over here and you can look Bank of America, an auto loan right now is 2.39%. Now I think my credit union does better, but that's just a number we're going to use to start with. And then you can also look over here, and of course, manufacturers like Toyota and Ford and everybody else, they always offer finance specials. It might be 0% like you see here on this Camry, but that's only for 36 months. It might be 1.9%, might be 2%, might be whatever it happens to be. And the average new car has gotten to $40,000. That's a ton of money, and you can certainly do better if you buy more carefully. You can also spend a lot more than that if you are so inclined. I don't advise it, but you can buy something in the mid 20s, you know, upper 20s, if you just buy a nice basic car, transportation to get you around. That's not the point of this video, however, to dictate what you should buy. It is that you should not pay cash for it in this environment. $40,000 is a great chunk. So we're gonna use that $40,000. We're gonna use this 2.39% from Bank of America, and we're gonna, play around with the return on the stock market. How about that? So let's flip over here and do a quick calculation. So you see $40,000 loan at that Bank of America, 2.39% for five years, 60 months, your payment would be $708 a month. So what I've done is go over here and gone to Ramsey Solutions. I'll reload it for you real quick. And it doesn't matter the ages you put in, but I just want to show a five year time span. So let's say 25 to 30. You've got zero invested already for your retirement because you're taking your cash out. But because you paid cash, you're going to be a smart, disciplined personal finance expert and you're going to put that $708 into an investment. And let's just be conservative here. Let's say the, the stock market is going to return 8%. We know that 15% cannot last forever. At some point, it's going to slow down. So just do that. In year number five, you will have grown from zero to 52,021. That sounds fantastic. But let's flip this on its head. Let's say you kept that $40,000, but because now you have to make a car payment, you have zero extra. You can contribute and you keep the same 8% return. You would now have $59,593. So you would have a net gain of about $7,000 by leaving your money in an investment working for you even if your cash flow is going towards a car payment. Now. I would actually split the difference a little bit. I would probably take somewhere, I don't know, five, ten thousand dollars and put that on the car to lower my payment and keep the remainder of it working for me. But this is the way you need to think about it. I like to say on this channel, it's just math. And in this case, it really is. I hate monthly payments. But once you do a quick calculation and you realize over the next five years, it's seven thousand more dollars 
in your bank account versus taking the money out and then being disciplined to put that money in for the future makes a lot more sense. And this is ignoring one tiny little tidbit here. We flip back over here, the total payment would actually equal 42,000. So you're actually getting an additional $2,000 because you're not paying all that interest. So I hope this helps. I hope this gets you thinking about it. This, this situation will change, okay? Whether car interest rates go up, if the S&P starts slowing down a lot, and this starts to make less and less sense depending on what the economy is doing and a situation where I'd rather not have a monthly payment in case the economy goes a little sideways. So this will change in the future. We've got to keep an eye on it. I'll do an update at that time. But right now, it makes all the sense in the world for me to finance a car as much as I can, keep the rest of my money working for me in an investment. I appreciate you being here. Please subscribe. Please just tickle that like button for me. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Leave me a comment. If you have any questions, let me know below.